uh, about a variety of uh, issues, including ISIP grant challenges, uh, in a, uh, International Society for Service Pro for uh, Service Innovation Professionals, I think is what the acronym stands for, uh, as well as uh, IBM Global University, and uh, also especially vis-a-vis uh, -vis IBM Watson. Uh, language identification in Watson, um, adding algorithms and various um, other related initial software. Um, perhaps you know uh, that uh, MIT OpenCourseWare, of which I'm uh, a founder of MIT OpenCourseWare Centric World University and School, uh, has uh, nine languages, and Wikipedia is in 287 languages, <laughs> and World University and School would like to be in all 7,106 languages and add an artificial intelligence uh, cognitive computing component um, as we develop in the CC Wikidata Wikibase. So Jim Sporer has been very helpful in adding, uh, sort of uh, uh, orienting how um, IBM Watson um, might, uh, how World University and School might engage IBM Watson and vice versa, among a whole series of other things. Uh, so, Scott, thank you very much for this um, uh, wonderful introduction. Uh, let me just say that as a professor of the University of New Hampshire, I, I can bring uh, two interesting uh, connections. First of all, uh, Massachusetts is uh, close by, you know, a neighbor in New Hampshire, as you know. So if there's any activity related to your uh, grandiose plans uh, I can help, be helpful with, I would be more than happy to do that. And another thing, I have been working uh, over the last couple of years on grand challenges and global engineering education. And I'm associated with uh, several global organizations uh, regarding this, uh, this matter. And as a matter of fact, uh, one month from now, as part of my activities in Europe and uh, Central Asia and Africa and uh, India, I'm going to attend a World Engineering Forum in Dubai in December. Great. So I'm hoping that we are going to establish a nice working relationship and we can support each other cause. So thank you very much for this opportunity. Fantastic. That sounds exciting. Uh, the um, opportunity for both uh, your project in Dubai as well as your projects in um, for, for prescription for Poland as well as your proximity to uh, MIT, for example, in Boston, uh, in Cambridge, um, offer all kinds of interesting collaboration possibilities. Uh, it will be exciting to focus this. Uh, I'm curious if we might begin with um, the ISIP grand challenges uh, also. Uh, yes, perhaps we let's, let's talk about that first. So please uh, set up the tone and I will sort of, uh, you know, I, I will sort of try to do my best. Go ahead, shoot. Great. Um, so ISIP grand challenges uh, focus on today's societal and business grand challenges, which are increasingly addressed through integrated approaches of open innovation, crowdsourcing, and multidisciplinary collaboration that result in improving existing service ecosystems, um, introducing new systems, or birth of whole new ecosystems. The ISIP uh, framework to address grand challenges includes a whole system approach to service innovation. Uh, for example, technology innovation, including social, mobile, big data, analytics, business innovation, uh, including open innovation, process innovation, crowdsourcing, multidisciplinary collaboration, and multidisciplinary lifelong learning that enables our members to continue to grow professionally and be prepared for the work challenges and opportunities of the 21st century. As uh, the ISIP grand challenge process and program has been developing, 
two uh, grand challenges have emerged um, to, that we've posted to the new ISIP website. Uh, and, and a third, uh, focusing on Africa, but that's uh, something uh, that we're not posting yet. So the first is the prescription for Poland, and this uh, is a grand challenge opportunity uh, that uh, I hope you, Andre, will talk a little bit about. And um, perhaps uh, if you want to just lay out what you're on, how you, how you might conceive of this and frame this issue, that would be great. We can come back to it later too, also for eventually posting to the web some uh, outtakes from this. Thank you very much, Scott. Uh, you have uh, you 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 have outlined a very nice characterization of ISIP. Uh, I have to correct you a little bit. I am serving as an ISIP ambassador, and they want to pronounce their institution as ISIP. Thank and I you. Think this is an extremely good characterization uh, with uh, different things, which by itself are grand challenges. But to make a long story short, I think ISIP, uh, as a mission statement, should definitely focus as one of the most qualified professional organizations to address grand challenges. Okay, so there is uh, no disagreement and there is no discussion here. I think we do recognize the value of ISIP and which direction we are trying to uh, evolve and establish uh, established, uh, their mission on a global scale. So that's, that's the first point. So this is just to, to concur with uh, uh, what you just described about ISIP. The second comment, before I go and talk about the prescription of Poland, let me just comment on grand challenges. And what is interesting you know, the idea of grand challenges originally coming from uh, providing the uh, fabrics for the supercomputing industry has evolved in a, a different uh, multifaceted type of definitions of grand challenges. And there is a little bit of chaos in terms of definition what grand challenges are all about, even though if you take a look at different uh, um, definitions, you can definitely identify a common denominator among them. And uh, as an example, let me just show you, if you could just grab this, uh, 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 let me just show you, as an example, this is just by coincidence, uh, this is this PRISM magazine, yes. uh, which is the October 2014 uh, issue. And if you take a look at, uh, you know, it says, an idealistic generation rises to the grand challenges. And there's a very nice uh, characterization of grand challenges. But still, this is a multifaceted type of thing. And there's, uh, four, oh, I, I don't know if you can read it. There's 14 grand challenges listed here. Great. And as I said, you know, there's a question of sort of having a, interoperable definition among different systems of grand challenges and also you know try to find sort of key kernel type of uh, things behind those grand challenges so that's my second comment now let's talk about the prescription of Poland now what is interesting if you look at different regions of the world you know uh, in the context of grand challenges there is no question that countries uh, try to position themselves in different capacity to be a player on the global agenda. In other words, you know, different countries, historically speaking, they had this uh, sort of uh, regional mindset, and now more and more countries are trying to become sort of global players. And we have good uh, de facto examples of such countries, South Korea, um, let's say Israel, uh, Finland, uh, Japan, and so on, when those countries have made it to become uh, those global players. Poland is an interesting country because right now it does belong to the region of Europe, which I call the Europe, Europe to be discovered. In other words, you know, a general perception, if you take a look at the world, is, you know, <laughs> Europe in the in the in views of our beloved American society, 
stops uh, <laughs> stops in Berlin. Okay, but you know, in reality, is that Europe, uh, the border of Europe, is on the Ural Mountains. So there is a lot of a huge population of uh, countries, people, cities, towns, uh, rivers, and so on, uh, which are still a part of Europe. So the challenge for Poland is to find uh, this country's place, not just in Europe, because they are doing very, very well in Europe, but the challenge for Poland is to become a global player in a positive sense of this word. So there is a connection between what we are trying to do, between grand challenges and this prescription of Poland. So when we started talking with a group of individuals from both the United States and uh, our Polish partners on uh, identifying uh, what is the potential of this country to become a global player, uh, we decided or proposed, okay, or proposed or discovered, that a combination of regenerative medicine and ICT would be a good fit. Okay, so in essence, what we are trying to do is to create, as you pointed out, an ecosystem in Poland, which would be an e-health, which would use service science principles, which was would employ the ideas uh, coming from computer technology development, such as the Internet of Things. Obviously, Watson and cloud and everything, what you have said and above, would be a part of it. And we started this process several years ago, and it's progressing very, very nicely. So the goal of the prescription of Poland is to create a new type of an ecosystem, which can be e-health, which can be uh, affecting and benefit the country, but at the same time, it does have a global recognition and brings Poland as one of the players in the global ar arena addressing grand challenges uh, uh, issues. Now, I can talk one step further and talk about the specifics of the program, but maybe you have some questions at this point. Great, Andre. Thank you. That's exciting and uh, interesting. As a, a kind of co-constituting collaborative conversation, I wonder if we might together talk further about this, uh, in a way, uh, platform or framework uh, for uh, the prescription for Poland grand challenge in terms of e-medicine and uh, global uh, and ICT um, in terms of bec becoming a global player uh, from the ISIP uh, perspective, from the Dato Techno Park uh, perspective, I, as, a, as um, the president and uh, current main developer of Wiki MIT Open Courseware Centric World University and School, we would like to offer uh, a Poland World University and School um, in Polish, and that would also be MIT Open Courseware Centric for free online. Uh, because free because Creative Commons licensed CC MIT Open Courseware centric university degrees and, and possibly uh, high school degrees. Um, the this would um, include, uh, for example, building in uh, an interlingual uh, world university and school um, these uh, courses. Uh, potentially translating from the MIT OpenCourseWare courses uh, into Polish for also studying interlingually how students learn in the big picture, in the grand, grand picture. Um, so in terms of e-health or e-medicine and uh, ICT, uh, information communication technologies, uh, world University and school degrees that we would like to offer online eventually in Polish in large languages in big countries would include bachelor's PhD law and medicine um, including defining medicine going ahead uh, with online hospital potentially so to come into collaboration or conversation with uh, the 
uh, prescription for Poland, there would be a kind of platform framework for e-health, e-medicine. World University and School also has um, a number of ICT subjects um, and uh, opens the possibility for um, sort of uh, under one umbrella a kind of uh, networking university as meta player um, as uh, offering each country that World University and School becomes accredited in for free degrees um, this uh, possibility for um, sort of global playing within the world university and school umbrella and then of course in multiple other ways. So this is um, thanks much to MIT OpenCourseWare's Creative Commons licensing as well as Wikipedia's Creative Commons licensing and the Wikipedia side allows a kind of openness where you or any of your Polish friends in Pol Polish could could teach to your web camera about academic subjects, about other subjects, um, and then post these, for example, Google Plus Hangout group video hangouts to a relevant uh, wiki subject page in Polish or in English about Poland or another language about Poland um, in relation to ICT or other subjects. So that's as a kind of uh, conversational um, reply to your prescription of for Poland, um, this would be one possible grand challenge um, uh, response, complement to uh, Poland becoming a global player uh, in terms of a platform. What platforms might you have in mind? How might you, um, or similarly, express how this prescription of for Poland might further um, Polish e-health and also um, the uh, ICT and um, related uh, developments vis-a-vis uh, -vis prescription for Poland. Yes, thank you very much for your outstanding offer and obviously I am thrilled and I'm extremely interested in uh, establishing a working relationship with you and your organization and thank you very much once again for this. Uh, this is uh, really very, very exciting and it's going to um, accelerate and help us, uh, you know, in uh, what we are trying to do in Poland. So that's number one. Uh, number two, I have several uh, comments and explanations and they are all relevant to your question. Okay. Uh, let me just say that as much as we want to emphasize sort of a, a, a root cause, a bottom up type of approach, you know, organic type of activities uh, based on around commercialization and using traditional ways of uh, stimulating things through government grants. Uh, let did me just say, say that... Did you say commercialization, did I hear, or did I hear... I didn't... I missed absolutely. I, I, we want to create a new alternative, uh, 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 alternative to medicine, uh, which will be commercially driven and not just supported by uh, the government. Okay? We would like to uh, make sure that uh, health services in Poland are supplemented to the existing ill-defined and non-functioning government-driven uh, health services in that country, okay? So that's uh, our ultimate goal. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, we do enjoy the highest level of political support for prescription of Poland, uh, which is a joint committee which I have an observe, which is the joint committee uh, called PLUS-IC, uh, Innovation Council, uh, which is uh, run uh, jointly by the U.S. Department of State and also the Polish Ministry uh, of Foreign Affairs. So we have, uh, you know, this infrastructure of promoting our activity in place on both the Polish side and on the American side. So that's my <coughs> second comment. The third comment when I am listening to uh, your idea of having uh, courses over the internet and, 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 and other things uh, in the context of uh, how it can benefit uh, this new breed of customers of e-health, I'm thinking 
about three different categories of uh, customers, and maybe there is more, but this, this is what I am thinking. With your permission, I would like to elaborate on that a little bit. Please. The first, uh, the first segment is, you know, uh, how much technology and uh, new things related to computer technology we can inject or introduce to the youngest age uh, in in, in our society? Is it going to be a girl which is who is uh, 12 years old or is it going to be a girl who is uh, 10 years old and so on and so forth? So that's an interesting uh, question uh, which, uh, which we, we would like to address and we have projects working in this direction as, as a matter of fact Jeff is uh, one of the advisors of such a project with, with girls looking into this matter. The second uh, interesting issue is, in my opinion, as we know, we have different uh, generations of uh, society and right now our current population of students belongs, so to speak, to the Y generation, okay? So I'm a baby boomer, you know, you are probably an X generation and there is a Y generation and those girls I'm thinking about is the Z generation. Now, I, I have been studying uh, the behavior of this Y generation, and as a matter of fact, on Wednesday, I don't know if you are familiar with, there was an excellent uh, presentation as part of the Isaac uh, Zick uh, Special Interest Group seminar, which opened my eyes, <laughs> uh, and they looked at the behavior of this Y generation and how they react to, let's say, teaching, traditional teaching, not traditional teaching, and so on and so forth. And we should pay attention to this generation and how they react to it, which is, you know, sort of different from what I used to do in my career. And the third segment of the society, which is very important, and this is related a little bit to this regenerative medicine uh, aspect of the prescription of Poland, is an aging segment of the society. And very often this aging segment of the society, number one is computer illiterate. You know, you remember Professor Rosinski, it took me 10 minutes to <laughs> domesticate Google, <laughs> right? And yes, also, yes. <laughs> and also, uh, very often, this society has a superficial um, usage of the internet, uh, which, which is uh, essentially wrong, okay? And, uh, you know, we have to make sure that whatever is going to be done using the Internet has a, a, you know, quality stigma behind it rather than what is happening right now in a sort of chaotic type of thing. I'm not advocating that we should restrict the Internet and so on. This is not what my, I'm saying, but the information coming from uh, is not the same as the quality of information coming from another source, right? And we can argue about Wikipedia, for, uh, for example, using this as a case study, as you mentioned, but this is an open, openness type of uh, platform. So this is my third comment, which brings an interesting uh, discussion. We can discuss this uh, more uh, later on. But uh, the fourth one is uh, uh, to have a direct uh, response to, to, to what, you, what you are proposing. This is what, what I would like to see. I'm familiar with the idea of uh, MOOCs and the revolution associated with MOOC courses, I would argue that there is a need, even right now, to think about two next generation, from the innovation standpoint, of modifying those MOOC courses. Uh, the, uh, and this is what I would like to bring to your attention, and hopefully that it's going to raise your interest a little bit. I would like to see uh, the next generation of MOOC being transformed into MOO, Massive Online Open Laboratory. Because I think that we are in the, at the stage when we can offer not just an access to quality courses over the internet, which is being done, but we can also offer so-called a labora home laboratory when students can conduct uh, laboratory experiments at home, okay? So, so that's the, the first thing what I would like to, to see happening. But there is uh, another thing, namely you, you mentioned uh, this uh, social type of activities and crowdsourcing and so on. 
you know, I think it's time to think about yet another gener uh, generation or, uh, or generation of this uh, massive online courses, which I call MOOS, M-O-O-S. S stands for service. And this is not just learning per se, and doing per se, and doing laboratory per se, but doing social activities and emulating services. For example, establishing uh, own companies, startups, using the internet and how the internet and your activities can help that. So this is my fourth comment. Fantastic. Thank you, Andre. Uh, I uh, am excited that this conversation is potentially so fruitful. The um, I won't. Um, let's come back to your four points in just a second. Let me respond um, generally to um, some thoughts about uh, the uh, a kind of once again uh, co-constituting conversation between MIT Open Courseware centric World University and School and uh, the prescription for Poland that you've just um, elaborated on a little bit in terms of the four points um, generally. So the, as I uh, think through um, the possibilities, for example, for Poland from a world university and school perspective, um, in terms of uh, also the commercialization side and pragmatically vis-a-vis um, -vis IBM's uh, far-reaching explorations of uh, artificial intelligence, cognitive computing, and um, the Watson technologies um, and medicine, uh, where they're bringing uh, numerous approaches to diagnostics um, that are still uh, finding form uh, digitally, information technologically, um, and IBM's commercialization approach, uh, I'm also reminded uh, um, of the of Kaiser Permanente, uh, this uh, health system nationally, which I think Consumer Reports said was seventh best in the nation, which um, within the context of the U.S. system, um, like all health insurance systems, uh, medical providers, uh, engages both the, the commercial side of um, the market uh, in terms of um, accessing uh, products from companies, um, in terms of uh, a variety of um, sort of intermediary relationships between uh, for-profit companies and governmental processes, governmental funding. Um, and that Kaiser Permanente, for example, in Northern California is in three languages uh, besides English, it's in Spanish and Chinese. There's a pragmatic platform already available um, in a sense that could be a model um, or um, a kind of uh, interesting, secure, um, rich with um, medical doctors, uh, a smart uh, also company, organization, uh, with a long history um, that could be emulated or modeled um, in terms of many of the issues you're talking about that has a kind of um, both on the ground history uh, predating the digital revolution um, as well as um, a uh, you know a digital um, significant um, capability and interregionally uh, Northern California uh, articulates with Virginia, with um, Southern California. They might even be international. Um, there would be um, perhaps uh, a way that Prescription for Poland in developing its own commercial interests vis-a-vis e-medicine and um, uh, ICT could um, articulate with um, uh, uh, these um, both governmental and commercial processes. In terms of um, the, the Creative Commons licensed MIT OpenCourseWare, which is for free, 
um, because it's Creative Commons license version 3, World University and School um, Creative Commons licensing version 3, and Wikipedia um, version, uh, I, I, they, they have a number of different licenses, also GNU, um, in their uh, big portfolio under the MediaWiki um, uh, sort of umbrella. They've also developed, uh, you know, a new database over the past uh, two years, which is interlingual and which could also be used and is being used for basic and fundamental research. Um, the, the defining of the CC space vis-a-vis -vis the commercial space in different countries is um, a fascinating uh, opportunity to sort of capitalize on. Uh, in the United States, you have public libraries, you have K through 12 free public education, um, but not at the university level in the United States. In uh, Poland, uh, I don't know, uh, I, I have one Polish friend in the San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, my impression is fees for universities are relatively low. Um, Germany, for example, just abolished fees um, for their universities. They were already very low. Um, their, Japan has a very low cost or uh, low tuition or low cost fees um, for education. So I think there is precedent around the world for online education and it's to articulate these um, two spheres vis-a-vis -vis the various populations you were talking about in Poland um, and also bring a kind of MIT um, Harvard excellence to an online university um, that articulates with the commercial side would be very interesting. As a, a, an additional point, um, the MIT itself is, is a fascinating example that has um, both uh, engaged industry uh, for fundraising and financially as well as um, engaged government and they've also put on the sponsored developed the MIT open courseware um, as a separate entity from MIT and also as a separate entity from MIT X. Um, they've put also on the Sloan School of Business um, for free undergraduate and graduate courses into MIT open courseware, not yet with degree possibilities. Um, and they also have uh, oriented themselves as, a, as maybe the preeminent STEM-centric university in the world um, in terms of entrepreneurialism. So uh, they uh, have um, perhaps uh, situated themselves in many of the um, interstices, if you will, that you're perhaps exploring and thinking about in terms of your prescription for Poland outline as well as um, in terms of e-health and uh, ICTs in Poland. Uh, that's very uh, broad in general and um, uh, perhaps we can break some of these points down but uh, I'm interested in what you think here. No, that's, uh, that's very, very, uh, very useful what you are describing about different uh, uh, possibilities using uh, so-called best practices and uh, well-recognized uh, uh, best practices and obviously you mentioned some big names and, and, and so on. So everything what you said, I, I can only say that I, I, I embrace it, uh, uh, you know, uh, as much as I, as I can. This is great. Thank you very much for, for, for those uh, uh, explanations and linkage. Uh, I would like to emphasize that uh, the prescription of Poland from day one has been uh, based on uh, a very focused collaboration between the United States and Poland. So any best practices, whether they are coming from, let's say, New England or California or from global corporations, everything, and especially what is uh, very dear to my heart is uh, I want to promote ISIP, as you know. Uh, so everything what you are saying is very much within the tone, to uh, within the, 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 the tone and the scope of what we want to do for the prescription of Poland. We want to create a new type of partnership between the United States and Poland 
focusing on uh, you know sort of <laughs> service science spirit in this collaboration. So everything what you said is uh, music to my ears. Now obviously what we have to do is to have another conversation with you and then uh, after we put some thoughts and maybe we can uh, get uh, feedback from Yasi. I think she would be <coughs> extremely useful for our conversation and try to uh, integrate and synchronize your way of thinking, what you want to do with your organization and how this prescription of Poland can help you. And I think this is also important to mention. Uh, I can give more examples and more opportunities but I would like to focus just on one to uh, sort of um, provide more munition for our collaboration. We have several other projects which are sort of evolving and are similar in nature, uh, but they are a different level of maturity within the scope of this globalization. And one of them is the concept uh, which we just, just started with Mayo Clinic based on the experience of what we already know, what works and what does not work in Poland, to establish uh, the first virtual African medical school in uh, Addis Ababa in Ethiopia. So there is another project which would be, I, I hope, uh, very much within your area of expertise and interest, which I would like to bring to your attention. Exciting. Yes, uh, that uh, is very um, germane. Uh, both um, World University and School, which is MIT Open Course Research Centric, uh, would like to engage IZIP in a variety of ways um, in uh, reaching out to vis-a-vis uh, -vis these grand challenges to develop uh, both a medical school education um, as well as um, online medical health care, the possibility of um, is, uh, uh, focus on Africa is uh, also a, a central um, part of world university and school in our uh, goal of being in 242 countries uh, at least uh, accredited with accredited universities under one umbrella of world university and school. The 242 number comes from Wikipedia's uh, number of countries by population. Uh, UN recognizes some 170-ish signatories to various treaties. Um, and the online possibility, distributed as it is, um, and now in all countries, uh, and infinitely extensible, add a computer here to um, or add a, a, a website there uh, with uh, you know uh, anyone being able to add those websites uh, technically um, for very low cost and uh, almost no barriers to access opens the possibility for um, a, a kind of um, you know in World University in Schools uh, and IZIP's uh, perhaps focus as well as for Poland's focus, um, focus on uh, online excellent education um, which will help many, many people. Uh, so that would indeed be um, an interesting um, direction, the uh, medical school in Ethiopia, uh, as a kind of focused grand challenge uh, uh, under the uh, umbrella of IZIP, which uh, also has sponsorship from IBM, from Cisco, and from Hewlett Packard, I think, uh, in terms of uh, beginning to develop an online educational opportunity, um, including medical school, in uh, a, a key uh, African country in the northeast of Africa. Um, to come back to uh, the idea that you were expe expressing earlier also about um, various kinds of massive open online uh, resources. Uh, the, what World University and School also in a societal sense commercially would like to do is to become a significant employer worldwide. 
Um, and this would include hiring, for example, from the greatest universities in, for example, Poland or the US or um, all over Africa um, to uh, teach in Google Plus group video hangouts and similar group video hangouts like WebEx, which uh, offered for the iZip uh, quarterly meeting a while ago. Um, so that process of uh, getting monies from, uh, have we lost you, Andre? That process of getting monies from um, both governments as well as uh, the uh, on other resources um, is uh, as well as companies potentially is very interesting. So um, thank you, Andre, for participating in this conversation. Um, a few outtakes about ISIP uh, here at the close. Um, Prescription for Poland is a grand challenge initiated by ISIP institutional member Data Techno Park and Prescription for Poland network of experts intended to build a strong innovation ecosystem around e-health and regenerative medicine in Poland. The grand challenge is to help Poland as a new EU country high ICT and medicine competencies uh, become a leading player into the global ICT medicine world through programs that foster collaboration with researchers, scientists, and professionals in Poland. For more information about Prescription for Poland, please contact Grand Challenges at issip.org. That's G R A N D C H A L L E N G E S at issip.org which is also the iZip uh, website where you'll find Grand Challenges under the About section. Uh, the Grand Challenge for iZip members and World University and School Universitians, uh, engaging Watson in cognitive computing, wiki editable web pages, accrediting MIT OpenCourseWare-centric wiki World University and School, would like to invite you to help uh, World University and School become the Harvard MIT of the Internet and in all 7,106 languages and 242 countries, offering CC online, university, bachelor, PhD, law and medical degrees and high school IB degrees in large languages and most countries. For more information about World University and School Grand Challenge, please contact info at worlduniversityandschool.org, I-N-F-O at W-O-R-L-D-U-N-I-V-E-R-S-I-T-Y-A-N-D-S-C-H-O-O-L.org. Uh, so the grand challenges at iZip are for um, an opportunity to create these uh, digital, often, uh, platforms and projects uh, that uh, can potentially help numerous people uh, come help uh, create and engage a grand challenge at iZip. Thank you. So World University and School is wiki, uh, MIT open courseware centric, CC. Uh, uh, ah, here's Andre back. OK, uh, sorry about that. That's probably our university system. I'm supposed to uh, get a very high speed uh, internet here. And sometimes, you know, it goes to zero. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. I apologize. I'm glad you're back on. and. Um, uh, so, uh, in terms of MOOCs and MOOCs and MOOLs, uh, the educational focus in world 
Field University and School would be um, in group video uh, around the MIT OpenCourseWare to respond to uh, what you uh, were talking about earlier. Uh, thoughts to come uh, to conclude in uh, about prescription for Poland, uh, I zip grand challenges and the grand challenge of MIT OpenCourseWare centric world university and school. Or further comments? Well, I I, I think uh, you know there's no no question. It's just a confirmation of of uh, existing synergy between what you are trying to do and what our interests are. Even without we started this conversation, so I guess. Uh, this conversation is great in that sense that you know I know what you look like and obviously it's always a good idea to talk to each other as you know because you know we are establishing a relationship so now I think we don't need to reassure ourselves that we are thinking about the future that we see the potential that we have mechanisms of getting there There's, it's 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 all done and and well understood and it was uh, all well understood even before we started talking to each other today. So now the question is, uh, you know, I sort of, uh, I would like to pursue, if, if you obviously, if, if, if you agree, I would like to pursue in three directions. The first thing is, I would like to um, consider working, uh, working together through ISAP. Because ISEP is sort of a, a ready-to-go organization. They are looking at grand challenges. They need to get global recognition, and I love ISEP. Uh, so that's number one. Number two, I definitely would be very much interested in uh, enhancing and integrating a critical mass uh, here in New Hampshire, which you know Jeff is a good example, and he is a great collaborator and uh, sort of couple this with your connections on the East Coast. I would be very much interested in pursuing that. And the third thing, I would like to <coughs> focus on very specific things which you would consider as a, a low-hanging fruit. And, you know, th this can be something you can propose and it can be something I can propose. My proposal is uh, has three components. The first thing is, I would like, with your permission, I would like to in, in include uh, the name of your organization as part of the master document I am developing for the prescription of Poland for the, for the government, for the State Department. So that's that's my first uh, proposal. Uh, the second proposal, I would like to identify a specific activity which we can conduct uh, here at the University of New Hampshire or in New England, which would be um, sort of, uh, uh, so, uh, which would be consistent with your objectives. So something specific we can start it working on. And the third thing, when I was thinking about your explanations, I would like to discuss with you how can I present and uh, introduce your organization for this uh, global forum in Dubai, which is, you know, one, one, uh, one month from now. So these are my three specific proposals I would like to bring to your, uh, uh, to your consideration on top of, as I said, trying to integrate our local uh, connections here in New England and also trying to strengthen ISIP as a, as a grand challenge, a uh, new type of professional organization. That is exciting and uh, a great opportunity. Um, it would be uh, very enjoyable to work on these grand challenges uh, for Prescription for Poland and World University and School, uh, which is MIT OpenCourseWare centric, uh, within the iZip uh, framework. Uh, and uh, yes, uh, fantastic to include. Uh, uh, MIT Open Course for Eccentric World University and School in the State Department's, um, in your State Department proposal. And uh, yes, um, it, it would be uh, very interesting to uh, further World University and School's East Coast contacts, uh, potentially uh, MIT Open Course for Eccentric um, with uh, the ISIP prescription for Poland and other uh, grand challenges in a variety of ways. Um, I 
think I would uh, also try to elaborate a few key points vis a vis prescription for Poland and uh, World University and School under the IZIP umbrella. Um, and that would be uh, perhaps um, as almost uh, an example or model of a first um, world university and school uh, in um, accrediting uh, for one, in another language for two, that's MIT open courseware centric for three, um, begin to uh, build out that platform uh, in uh, Wikidata, Wikibase, um, with a Polish speaker just for the initial uh, web pages um, that would are wiki and that are extensible um, would be invaluable uh, for the interlingual database aspect. Um, so those would be my key points to come into conversation uh, with you um, and. Also, World University and School would seek funding for some of these uh, IT development processes um, and uh, would like to come further into conversation with you about that as well. Yes, and uh, I would be open uh, trying to bring, uh, you know, Polish investors and uh, bring the attention of Poland. If, if as I said, if anything is um, done in, uh, in the spirit of partnership, which means that there is a contribution from both sides. The polls are very much open, uh, and uh, they are willing to collaborate. Uh, you know, uh, trying to establish this partnership relationship. So, you know, it's it's something uh, uh, which can be done. Great. Okay. So, are you going to talk to Yasi about this, uh, or what's the specific course of action? How, who would be sort of synchronizing uh, those activities? Uh, I, I, I obviously I feel comfortable to talking to you directly, but I think we we maybe for the for the sake of uh, of our conversation and collaboration, maybe we should uh, brief Yasi and uh, uh, sort of uh, explain to her and get her opinion how we should proceed further. Uh, that makes a great uh, deal of sense. Uh, I will uh, address an email to Yasi and all of us about this, and um, perhaps we can proceed from there. Uh, I am focusing, uh, in many ways, uh, the grand challenges. So far, it's been in collaboration, I think, with both Jim Sporer and uh, Yasi Mahagdam. And uh, I think. Um, that I will continue focusing the grand challenges. Uh, I world university and school uh, needs to become financially operational, and um, that takes priority over uh, the grand challenges currently. But um, this is uh, I will do. I will uh, write that email, and uh, we'll see how Yasi responds. That sounds very good. Great. Thank you very much. It has been a quality and enjoyable discussion. So thank you very much for making my Friday even more more enjoyable. <laughs> Andre, thank you for your cordiality and uh, the uh, great conversation, uh, which is potentially very uh, generative and interesting. Very nice to meet you, Jeff Brody. Um, nice to look, meet you, Scott. Okay. 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 Thank you, Doug. Thank you very much. Have a thank nice weekend. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Bye.